Welcome to a video, another video, and hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad. That's the only day I can do it, and it's windy, of course, and I don't have one of those wind mics on my phone. So today we're going to do a 120,000 mile review on my 2012 Dodge Avenger RT. Um, you don't get a lot of these. A lot of reviews are for brand new cars, uh, but you don't get a lot of like long-term reviews. And I have had this since June of 2012. I bought it brand new off the lot had 14 miles on it and now it's up to 120,000 like 510 miles and so we're going to talk about what exactly is an Avenger RT talk about the problems I had um, and some other things and the timing is good because it's for sale <laughs> I have the Challenger I don't need it anymore but it's been a pretty good car so let's go ahead and talk about it um, first, Avenger RT what is it? well it's the top trim you can get in the Avenger comes standard with the the uh, 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 and this car rated at 283 horsepower I think Challengers are rated like 305 um, but it's the exact same V6 that you find in all the other vehicles the Jeeps Challengers Chargers minivans uh, everything I mean the, the motor is great um, so that's the same as you can get that engine in the SXT Avengers 2 this one, as you can see, has a, a blackout package. Well, not a package. It's part of the RT um, with the blacked out lights, blacked out grill, has the fog lights. Uh, unique to the RT is those stripes right there. Only comes on the RT. Uh, those wheels, 18-inch premium alloy wheels. You will only find that wheel on an RT. Uh, up front also, it does have a different suspension on it. Uh, it has a sportier suspension. And we I do know that for a fact. I met up with some Avenger people. Uh, quite a long time ago, they had some SXT Pluses, and we each drove in uh, each one of our vehicles and took a couple hard turns, hard corners to see how it reacted. And mine had the least roll. Uh, you could tell for sure that those springs were definitely much, much firmer, or the suspension. Um, then going on, I did have the sun and sound package, so it has the sunroof on it. Sorry, it's a little dirty. It got rainy and didn't really clean it today. Um, comes with a spoiler. I debadged all of it except for the RT. I left the RT on there, um, but the Dodge and Avenger letters are gone. And of course, it's got the dual exhaust. So on the outside, that's really it. Oh yeah, one other thing I want to talk about. Um, no one really thought about it at the beginning, but this is the original wide body. This is what they should have done with the Challengers and Chargers. Now, I love the wide body Challengers and Chargers. I'm not saying anything bad about them. I love them. But I do think that um, they should have stamped the wide body into the fenders and quarters doors, um, kind of like they do here instead of using flares. Just my opinion. I know a lot of people feel that way. Um, I still love the look, so I'm not knocking or anything. I just think it would have been better if they did something like this uh, on it. So let's go ahead and pop the hood open really quick. And there we go, the 3.6 liter V6. Uh, the engine cover is on right now, but if we take this off, there it is right there. Same as in all the other cars, except facing sideways. And this car is completely stock. Um, I only did two mods to it. One, uh, I did get a Mopar cold air intake on it that I ran for most of its life. Um, I'll throw a picture of it installed right now. And... Um, because I'm selling this, I did take that off, put the stock intake back on, and I sold that cold air intake, which worked out good because I think I paid originally like 350 bucks for it, brand new in 2012, and I sold it this year for like 200 bucks after shipping. So I got CAI for eight years for $150, and it made a huge difference. I'll tell you what. So the first and only time I did a cold air intake where you could hear the difference in the engine noise. It just woke the engine. It almost sounded like it had an exhaust on it. It was pretty awesome. Okay, so now what else makes an RT an RT? Well, if we go on the inside, you've got this racing stripe that goes through the seat, front and back. You have the RT embroidered headrests. Again, these are things you will not find in any other trim level. Um, all along the interior, it's got red stitching. And I think in the SXTs, SS, SXT Pluses, uh, it's white. So this is the only car you get the red stitching in and I think one of the other coolest things and this is 100% unique to the RT is uh, the gauge cluster besides the fact that it says RT right there um, they're flipped so this is the tack that's the speedo 
in every single other Avenger, the Speedo is in the center, the tack is on the right, which makes sense. Most people look at the Speedo, but you know, old school racers, you look at your tack. Now, granted, this is an automatic, it's not a stick, so it doesn't matter as much, uh, but I use it in manual mode all, all the time. Uh, but it's, it's just cool, it's different. And it is funny when you get people that are used to other Avengers get in here and they're like, what the hell's going on there? Oh, and one other thing, I was talking about the seats, I forgot. This is a Z cloth. So it's a slightly different cloth with other sides. Unfortunately, I do have that, but you know, $120,000 of getting in and out. This is the worst of it though. <laughs> I'm a big guy, I'm 6'2 and 230 pounds. So, I mean, that's expected over time. But overall, everything else, you look at the leathers held up. Everything's held up really good. Interior's really good. Kept in the garage most, most, most of its life. So all the interiors held up pretty good other than a few stains when uh, I won't uh, say who drove it and spilled some things. Oh, and one other mod besides that CAI I said is I did have, let me get myself out of the picture. I did have the windows tinted. I did the legal limit for Texas. So we got like, I don't know, what is it? 35% on the front windows, but the backs, Rear doors, back window, uh, as dark as I could possibly do it. So <laughs> it is a cave inside there. I get called up. Everybody rides in the back says how much of a cave it is. Uh, now, as far as accidents, things like that, uh, it's only been in two. I did have one person. This always pisses you off. Big old door ding, and you can see that vertical edge right there. There it is. That happened like the second year I had it. Huge door ding. So besides that, I did have one small accident where somebody were in a double turn lane and somebody turned into my lane and just hit me right here. Um, I it, it wasn't very bad. It had about 12 hours of repair time on this door. It's still the original door. A little scrape here they had to fix. And then... Um, the wheel was fine, but there was a little scratch on it, so they ended up fixing it and do a four-wheel alignment. But that's it. No other accidents, nothing bad. Um, worst damage on here is it does have hail. Uh, this thing's been through two hail storms, one while parked in the driveway, because uh, for a weekend I had my garage filled up with stuff, and I had to park it outside for a couple days, and just so happened to hail that weekend. And So we got a bunch of hail. Um, most of it is the small ones. And then a second hail storm, my wife was driving with my daughter in a car and they drove through and they, they could, there's no nothing they could do. They couldn't get covered. Fortunately, that was bigger hail and left bigger dents. But surprisingly, even though this is a black car, um, a lot of the dents are hard to see, especially from that first hail storm. So that's it for damage wise. Um, and obviously that has nothing to do with the car Dodge or anything, not just, you know, accidents, driving, weather. You can't fault the car manufacturer for stuff like that, obviously. Okay, now how about issues? What issues have I had? Well, let's start at the front here. Uh, as you can see, the lights are getting a little darker here. Engine-wise, I had... Actually, engine, nothing at all. The, the furthest into the engine is the thermostat, which is located right here. Uh, that actually went bad on me and differently than usual usually i've had thermostats go bad on me but it's always been that they wouldn't open and the car overheats <laughs> this case was the exact opposite the thermostat was stuck open and would never close which being in texas was wasn't a big deal honestly because it gets so hot that the car gets up to temp pretty dang fast uh but i had to finally address it when i took a trip up to detroit in january and I was driving through 20 degree weather and on the freeway, my temp gauge barely went up at all. Like it stayed down all the time. Check engine light comes on because, you know, it's saying, hey, the engine's not warming up like it's supposed to be. Uh, so that was the only time it caused an issue. And I immediately replaced, as soon as I got to Detroit, got that thermostat replaced. So that's it there. Engine wise, uh, nothing else. I did um, replace the AC condenser because I don't know if you can see in here 
AC went out one time. Um, I looked in there and I could easily see where the leak was coming. There was just a huge wet spot on the AC condenser right where the uh, lines hook up to it. So I didn't even have to take it to the shop. I knew exactly what the problem was, ordered a new one and replaced it. And then our nap, like I said, engine never had an issue, no problems. I've done my own oil changes, used all full synthetic on it all the time. Okay then, and then continuing on, I don't know, I have a video out from a few weeks ago where I talked about the battery and how much it's the worst location ever. They put the battery down here, you actually have to take the wheel off to get to it. Um, so I've replaced two or three batteries, I don't remember. The first one was a bit rough because number one was the first time I was getting in there. But the positive terminal, the cable was so corroded um, that there was hardly any terminal left on the end of the cable like i have no idea how you'd even maintained electrical contact uh, so i had to replace that by a new little cable end and splice in the new cable end so that's all i had to do a battery brakes i do have new brakes i got the i actually originally got power stops on all four corners power stop uh drilled slotted rotors and pads and the fronts went bad right away within a year the vibration was horrible in the front um some hammer rollers i don't know they just didn't get bedded in properly or i think i had one bad braking incident. anyway they didn't hold up very good so i ended up buying uh ebc rotors for the fr uh, front and i love the ebc um it's a little dirty so brake pads awesome the rotors awesome never i replaced them a couple years ago never had a problem with the ebc's i love these ebc's uh still has the power stops on the rear because the rears were fine there was no reason for me to re-replace those um tires i've gone through a lot of tires but that's because of the way i drive <laughs> and then back here no issues at all no problems whatsoever all right so let's button this up let's go to the inside oh wait i forgot one more thing because this is a side mounted engine the torque of the engine kind of makes it rotate this way instead of this way like in rear wheel drive cars and there is an engine mount right down here uh, that is just a big rubber bushing basically and that cracked um, i didn't even know it i had no vibration no sign of it cracking till i actually bought this uh, i forgot this is i forgot earlier this is a mod i did this is a stock motor mount so these are empty holes and then these are little bushing inserts that go in here and it firms it up so it keeps the engine from rotating too much which gives you a little better response and they're pretty cheap they're like 30 bucks from uh, polybushings.com and so you see it's you lower the mount and just put the inserts in here so anyway so when i pulled it out when i took that out i looked at it and there was a solid crack right through that rubber thing like all the way through um I honestly don't know how it wasn't vibrating because I had like literally I never felt anything so but these bushings they go on both sides and they go in there and they actually make it stronger than that so I didn't even have to really replace that I just put the bushings in and it's been perfect ever since all right now let's go to the inside uh, now also one thing I want to bring up uh, so there were a couple recalls i took took care of most of them i think one was like a something in the software um there is still an open recall on here which needs to get fixed and that is for these head restraints uh these have the active head restraints that kind of like pop out when you get rear-ended uh so i think there's an issue with resetting them i'm not really sure it's nothing too bad nothing that needs like urgent attention but it's just a recall that's out there and then also they found um chrysler found that one of the cylinder cylinder heads uh for a couple years i think from 2011 to 2013 had a little issue so they sent out this letter now this car normally came with a five-year hundred thousand mile warranty i think which obviously that's expired a long time ago but because they found the cylinder head issue it's on the left cylinder head uh, they actually extended the warranty for that for 10 years or 150,000 miles so that means the left cylinder head actually is still under warranty for another year and a half because i still got 30,000 miles before i hit 150 so i'll hit that 10 year mark well i'm not going to hit it because it's for sale <laughs> someone else will hit that 10 year mark before this but uh the warranty should be transferable so i'm sure it'll still be uh covered up to that point but i haven't had any issues with it at all so 
and even says that you know not all of them have experienced an issue so i haven't had any issues but anyway that's just something to note okay so continuing on with problems what other problems have i had in this car uh, I brought up the AC condenser earlier. Uh, I think the AC condenser line, drain line, where the, uh, you know, ACs produce water and they drip under your car. Well, I think that drain line got clogged one time because uh, it actually got a little bit wet on my passenger side carpets because I think the water backed up because uh, it wasn't draining and came into the inside. Now, it hasn't done that in several years, so I think the clog removed itself, but I still hear a little water sound swishing around here, so I'm not 100% sure. It's It might still be partially clogged, um, but not enough that it's backing up into the floor anymore. Okay, so what other issues? Uh, radio is good. This this did come does come with the... Boston Premium Audio and the nav system, everything DVD. This actually opens up. Uh, I did have a period of time about five years ago that this screen would once in a while flicker white and then just crash and reboot. And I had this problem for, I want to say a few months, but I was busy. I couldn't get to the dealer. I actually took some pictures of it. And then by the time I was able to get to the dealer, it hadn't happened in a long time. And not at this point... I, I want to say that was 2015, 2014. Uh, it hasn't happened since then. So I guess it fixed itself. I don't know. But I haven't had that issue at all whatsoever. Um, another problem, these buttons. So let's see if, you know what, let's go ahead and let's just get accessories on. So if you look right there... As we press these buttons, we go through the menu and see this button, there's something back in there. So now it's going through them. Now it's going through all of them. System OK, personal settings, blah, blah, blah. Um, but once in a while, this button just, you press it, press it, press it, and it just will not cycle through. Like you saw that first time I did it, it went to the next one and then skipped all the way back to uh, the temperature, the main one, like almost as if I hit home. Uh, and then sometimes, like right now, you see that I was on tire pressure. I hit it a bunch of times before it flipped over. Um, but just so you see, system okay. No issues. So, yeah, the, these buttons are a little weird. Um, but just these. Uh, and then actually, although once in a while, this is pretty rare. I'd hit this button, and it would think I hit the call button. And all of a sudden, I'd hear, like, phone not connected. Or who do you want to call? Because I did have my phone connected sometimes. Um, cruise control buttons, I've never had a problem with. So it's just these right here. And I think it has some to do with like the clock spring or something. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, everything else works. I already showed you the little seat tear. Um, there is in this emergency brake, if you can see, focus right there. The chrome plating is cracked right there a little bit. And that's pretty much it i think oh another common another issue i had uh there is obviously you have your whole ducting system for your heating and air conditioning and there is a little actuator that activates the blend door that you know kind of directs the airflow to either go through the the dash vents or floor vents um that went bad and at one point it has plastic gears in it and those plastic gears wore down to the point where it would try to move the doors but it couldn't and you would just hear like this click, like it was like kind of like that, just over and over while I was trying. So I did replace that, uh, and it works now, except now the second actuator is, I don't know if it got misaligned or what, it'll, and we might hear it when I turn it on, it kind of creaks like a rusty hinge, rusty door, it's really weird. So there's that issue, but it's like a $40 actuator, and it's actually not just a Dodge thing. Uh, it's a common actuator. In fact, I was talking to a buddy of mine. He had a Chevy Impala, and he had the identical issue in his car. He had the exact same thing. He said he just heard this knock, and he had to replace that actuator. So it's whoever makes that actuator. Um, apparently, multiple manufacturers use it, and so they have a problem with it. Okay, now let's talk about what i did with the car why i got it um i originally bought it because i had just left my job where I, I had a company car 
And because I left that job, I had to give the company car back. And I went to go work for a body shop that was 40 miles away. And I needed a new car because I had a truck, but my truck had horrible mileage. Would not have been good for that drive. Um, and I need some with good mileage. Now, if I had the money and could afford it, trust me, I would have had a Challenger SRT, you know, right away, mileage be damned. But I could not afford a Challenger SRT. And I wasn't going to go for a V6 Challenger because I just couldn't do that. Because if I did that, every time I was on road, every time I saw an SRT Challenger, I would just regret it, be depressed, whatever, um, just wishing I had that car. And I, it's not fair to me or it wouldn't be fair to the car. I mean, I don't want to hurt the car's feelings, you know. So the way I look at it, I'd rather have the best of something than settle on something completely different. So that's where this Avenger RT came in. It's an RT. It's sportier. It's got the V6, almost 300 horsepower, close to it. Downside is it's a front wheel drive. Um, but it's still, it's actually pretty peppy. It's pretty quick. I will say this. There's one thing this car does that you don't get in rear wheel drive cars, and it's torque steer. And normally that's a bad thing. So torque steer, if you don't know, it's like I was talking about earlier where the engine kind of like rotates but also the front wheels are also your turn steer wheels you're steering with them and they're driving you so when you have a lot of torque hitting that wheel um, it can actually jerk this wheel over to one side uh, so you have to be careful of that and this you know when you hit it just right in good air this thing will like jerk the wheel over and yeah, it's not normally a good thing, but it's kind of fun because it just it's like a sign like, oh yeah, I got I got some power. You know, it's it's not a total complete turtle or anything. It's got some power. And it's quick. It's fun. It it's got some get up and go and no problem merging on freeways. Uh it is a 14 second car. I mean from the factory, I think it was rated in, in the mid 14s. And speaking of that, I did drag race this car one time. Uh it was like a month after I got it. It had 1,200 miles on it. It was July of 2012. Uh, I took it down to Ennis Motorplex and raced it. And in that, at that moment, it was 100% stock. I didn't have the CAI in it, nothing. It was 100% stock. And I actually still have all the time slips. Uh, so this is how many runs I did. One, two, three, four, five, six. I did seven runs. Now, this was July in Dallas, Texas at Texas Motorplex. So... Uh, I don't have the exact weather, but it was hot. Um, DA in July will average around 3,000 DA. Uh, so that's pretty high. So most of the night I ran a 15 1, 15. Uh, that was most of it. And this is actually my best run of the night. It was the later one in the night because, you know, DA started going down. And the, this ticket has faded quite a bit over time. And so. What we got here, 60 foot, I mean, horrible compared to uh, <laughs> uh, my Challenger, my 1320, 2.3, but uh, eighth mile in 9.73, and then quarter mile, 15.043, so 400 soft, uh, or 43,000 soft from breaking into the 14s, and that's at 92.99, so not fast, but, I mean, that right there is close enough in that high DA, this is a 14 second car. Uh, if if I had better DA, this would have definitely hit the 14s with, without a doubt. Um, but that is the only time I've ever had it drag racing. And uh, since then, daily drive, I used to daily drive it. I had 40 plus mile commute each way for years. Uh, this thing has been awesome for me. Uh, other than the problems I talked about, nothing with the engine, nothing with the transmission, no issues. Uh and I drive it hard. I, I just my driving style is I drive it hard, and that's just the way I am. But I honestly think that's sometimes better for cars. Uh, I, I know people that like, uh, for example, my mom a long, long time ago, '90s, she had a '91 Dodge Spirit with a turbo engine in it, and that thing was. I think that was actually like a might have been a 14 second car too. She didn't care. She just happened upon this car and got a good deal on it that's why she had it but she drove that thing like a mile to work never i don't think that thing ever saw above 2000 rpm except the few times i drove it and that car had problem after problem it blew a freeze plug the turbo went bad on it eventually so 
not driving or driving slow all the time in a lot of ways I think isn't that as good for an engine. So, and I mean, like I said, I've had no issues at all with this engine. It's been awesome. Now, speaking of transmission, I brought that up. Uh, that is one of the other things I do not like about this car is the transmissions aren't that great in it. It's held up. Uh, but some of the downshifts are hard. And that was from day one. Uh, it just downshifts really hard sometimes. And if you went through adventure forums, you would see that that's a lot of people would complain about the same thing. It just, it, it's not a good type of hard. It's one that feels like, man, something's going to break one day in this thing. Uh, so I never did like that part of the transmission. Okay, now comfort wise, like I said, I'm 6'2", 230 pounds. And I fit in here fine. Seat goes back quite far enough for me. I'm comfortable in it. The back seat is a little tiny. Sorry about the dog here. I need to vacuum it. I know. Um, and it's dark because of how bad the windows are tinted. Not how bad, but how dark. Um, for me, uh, it's a tight fit back there for someone my size. But other people, it's not too bad. Uh, but not the greatest. Uh, I do have the sunroof, which is awesome. Which, by the way... Uh, it is a factory sunroof. Never leaked at all. No issues there whatsoever. It works just fine. In fact, let's go ahead, vent that up, or just open it all the way. No grinding, nothing, so that, that works really good. Stereo system, not bad. It's the Boston system. It's It sounds decent. It's pretty good. It's better than most stereo systems. Not, you know, not the greatest, but no slouch either. Okay, so now let's go for a drive. Uh, I'm going to switch cameras really quick. I'm going to uh, put on my GoPro here so we can do a POV drive. And I got uh, one or two more things to talk about, and we will end this video. So let's go. All right, we've got our camera switched over, so let's go ahead and start her up. Let's go ahead and take off. And then let's hope that I don't get pulled over <laughs> because it is January 2021 and my registration sticker is May of 20. Uh, I let it expire because I, I wasn't, was, I was working from home because obviously most people were. And then I got the Challenger. So I was like, why should I waste money renewing it when I'm not even going to drive it? So, but now I am driving it. Let's hope we don't get in trouble. So, I mean, no hands, drive straight not pulling I'm a little bit now we're on decline but yeah hold straight uh it did have the four-wheel alignment three years ago now um from when that little minor accident i talked about they did the four-wheel alignment so drive straight drive smooth you can see the wheel now we're only doing 40 miles an hour uh let's go here now before we get to the main road where we can start going a little faster let me talk about mileage and because that is one of the reasons I bought this car. I talked about, I was working far away and I need some with good mileage. And it does get good mileage. Uh, that night of drag racing, I actually uh, reset the mileage clock and uh, kept it at cruise control, 70 miles an hour from a track to my house, all freeway, two in the morning, so there was no traffic. It was 77 miles and I actually got above 30 miles a gallon. Uh, now normally, if you drive it normally, you can pretty easily average 22, 23 miles per gallon. Uh, if you drive like I do, <laughs> you're going to be down. I drive it hard, uh, so I tend to get 18 to 20. That's because I really, truly do drive it super hard. In fact, let's see if there's... It says 17.9 average miles per gallon right now, which is, like I said, about where I am just because how hard I drive. Again, drive it normally. You'll easily get above 20 miles per gallon in this without a doubt. Uh, and then talk about gas. This is a flex fuel car. So if you want, it can run E85. And I did run E85 for a little bit, uh, but E85 now is it any cheaper than other gas and unfortunately uh, with when you're running E85 your mileage is a lot worse so it's not really worth it to run E85 uh, unless you're doing it for performance you got to tune but the car can run E85 if you want it to okay so we are 
on the road, about 50. Uh, I'm not, I've had, the only times I've ever had vibration in this wheel is because the tires were out of balance. Uh, that is something I have had an issue with is over time the, the tires easily get thrown out of balance. When that happens, this wheel will just start vibrating on you when, you know, the faster you go which is common. The faster you go, the more vibrates because the tires are out of balance. But um, I've always uh, bought my tires a discount tire. I've always gotten certificates, so I've always had free balancing. Uh, and so anytime that happens, I just sub appointment, go discount tire, they balance the tires, and bam, the wheel's perfect. Um, so no issues there at all. But I mean, you can hear, uh, it's it's quiet. It, it's smooth. The engine, I'll tell you what, this is what I love about this Pentastar engine and why they use it in all the vehicles. 120,000 miles on it, and it still runs so smooth. There'll be times that you don't even know it's running. Um, now, again, this is stock exhaust too, stock exhaust, stock. It, at right, it's 100% stock. And the engine is just butter. It is just so smooth. And like I said, I have always used full synthetic oil, so I've taken care of it. Um, but that is like, I have zero complaints about this engine. Like you need a daily drive, you need some reliable. I'm telling you what, these V6 Pentastars are just awesome. You hear how smooth that is? I mean, this car, I, I can't say enough how great this car is. I mean, if I had the space and didn't really need the money from selling it, I would keep it as a daily driver. Even though I wouldn't use it as much just because it's still not my 1320. <laughs> um, I'm in it and I still would much rather be in my 1320s. So I'm not, I'm not one of those people that kind of like daily drivers because um, I just want to be my 13. I want to enjoy that car. Um, what's the point of me having that car if I don't enjoy it? So there's really, that's why there's really no point in me keeping this, even if I honestly could. Okay, let's do a quick little 30 roll hit. So let's get up to 30. Let's get this truck to pass by. By the way, we magically tele teleported to Mexico, and here we go. So, you know, <laughs> it's not my challenger, but it's still quick. And honestly, uh, from a dead stop, it will spin the tire. Uh, now, unfortunately, this does have a one-wheel peel, front-wheel drive. It doesn't have any kind of limited slip. I mean, obviously it has like ESC and traction control and all that, um, but it's got enough uh, enough power to, to spin that tire, so it's not too bad. Oh, and this thing does have auto stick, so we can just throw it into auto, and you got your gears. Right now it's in six, it's a six-speed transmission, and you can downshift yourself, which I won't go too far into that right now because I actually have another video I recorded a while back that I'm going to release. I wanted to release this first. I'm going to put out another video talking about the auto stick, how it works, how, you use it, how I use it, and just some pointers about it. Um, the auto stick does not work the same as in the Challengers, uh, but it is still pretty, pretty fun. Oh, you hear that? There was a little tire spin going in a second there. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. This has been a little longer video than I usually like to make. Uh, just because there's a lot to talk about. I mean, I've had this car for eight and a half years now, and I put 120,000 miles on it. And it is just a fun car. It's it's a great little car. Uh, so if you want it, hey, it's for sale. Buy it. <laughs> it's listed on Car Gurus right now. Uh, so go look it up. So I hope you like this video. I hope it helps you out if you're in the market, if you're looking at a used Avenger. Uh, if you're not sure about them, because I know these cars get a bad rep. Now, I will say they are hard to work on. 
Um, the battery, the location sucks. If the alternator's bad, you've got to take the AC. I mean, it's, but that's a lot of front wheel drive cars, period, are a pain to work on. But um, that just is what it is. And and these cars do get a bad rep, but I mean, I th maybe it just had to do with how you drive it, how you take care of it. Again, I've always done religious oil changes, taking care of it, and it's been a great car. It, it's been so much better than the bad rep that, that they tend to get. And if you have any questions for me about anything, leave a comment down below. Leave a comment anyway on just anything whatsoever. Uh, let me know. Uh, I wish I could have done more with this car. If I had the money, I'll tell you what, I would have supercharged. I would have done some crazy stuff with this car uh, if I had that kind of money and all that. But I don't, so it was stock. That was fun. All right, time. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.